All right, I've been working on this project for, uh, for a while, actually, uh, in one form or another for about a year and a half. And this is the first time I've made any kind of public announcement about it and shown anybody this. So uh, this is a preview. I have some uh, 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 prototype hardware that I brought with me, and I'll be telling you what I've done. So just kind of as background, um, Bluetooth sniffing uh, is a hobby of mine. And ever since uh, Dominic and I gave a talk uh, a couple of years ago at Shmoo, um, I've been kind of thinking about more about Bluetooth sniffing and, and kind of categorizing the different solutions that are available for Bluetooth sniffing. And I like to categorize them, I like to put them kind of in four quadrants based on uh, whether the solution can get uh, just uh, like some of the packets for a target or if it can get all the packets for a target. Um, can it monitor all the targets that are in the vicinity or can it only monitor some targets? Um, and so down in the, uh, the lower left hand corner you can buy an off-the-shelf Bluetooth adapter for as little as about 10 bucks and you can use it for some rudimentary sniffing but basically all you can do uh, in most situations is to, dis is to locate and identify uh, discoverable devices so you guys probably have all heard this before or tried this, um, or you, you know that you shouldn't leave Bluetooth devices in a uh, discoverable mode except when you need them to be uh, because they're really easy to find and anyone can hack on them. Um, so for 10 bucks you can do that, but that's not very interesting to me. I'm more interested in solutions in the other three quadrants. Um, you can buy a uh, an expensive piece of test equipment that's designed for Bluetooth development and testing um, for uh, at the low end about ten thousand dollars and there's uh, uh, the, the lowest end system of this type that I know of um, allows you to sniff all the packets for a particular target network uh, but it doesn't let you sniff all target networks at once uh, but there is at least one product uh, that's in the $20,000 price range uh, that does let you sniff all packets on all networks all the time. Hey, that's really cool, but who has 20 grand sitting around? Dominic Spill came along. Dominic, you're in the back, aren't you? Wave your hand. Yay! Dominic is my hero. He he wrote a paper a few years ago, what, three, three years ago-ish, four, on Bluetooth sniffing, and he came up with an implementation for GNU Radio and the USRP. And as many of you know, I'm a big fan of GNU Radio and the USRP, and as I was getting into that technology more and I wanted to try some things, I ended up reading his paper, and I thought, wow, this is a really cool solution. What he did was he took a $1,000 piece of hardware, and he, he configured it to sit on one Bluetooth channel. You know, Bluetooth is a frequency hopping system. It hops, every packet is on a new channel uh, selected out of 79 channels. So he just, sit, he just decided to sit on one channel and just continuously monitor and try to detect every Bluetooth packet that, was, that would appear on that one channel. And it turns out this is a really useful approach because it allows you to sniff all the targets in, in the vicinity or within range of, of your sniffing platform. Uh, and uh, but, it, of course, it only gets a small subset of the packets that any one target is transmitting. Uh, it gets about 1 79th of those packets. But that's enough to get, to, um, get a good survey of what Bluetooth traffic is in an area and figure out what Bluetooth devices are in an area. And then he and I subsequently did some work together that helped, uh, that, um, kind of, he showed how to uh, uh, use this method to determine, to, to learn some things about the network that, that might not be obvious, that aren't content, like more of the address of the, of the target than is actually contained in the packet. Uh, and then he and I worked together to, and showed that you could actually figure out the hopping sequence uh, just based on monitoring on a single channel. Uh, you could actually learn, an attacker or a sniffer could learn what the hopping sequence is and predict that down the road. Uh, so we came up with a solution um, in about the $2,000 price range that uh, used the USRP2 
and we actually implemented uh, we did a proof of concept uh, hopping in um, in software, and we also implemented a, an all-channel Bluetooth monitor uh, for the first time in this kind of a price range. So we were pretty excited about that. You know, we brought down the cost of all-channel Bluetooth monitoring by uh, an order of magnitude, but. Um, you know, we had a lot of good comments after that talk, and and uh, one that I really took to heart that was a criticism was, hey, you guys said Bluetooth sniffing is hard at the beginning of your talk, and at the end of the talk, Bluetooth sniffing was still hard, <laughs> right? And uh, it would be really nice if we had some kind of a solution that was more affordable. Um, so I've been thinking about this a lot over the last couple of years, and the lower left-hand quadrant, I'm not all that excited about. The upper right-hand quadrant, I am excited about. I think it's great to have tools in that space. But it's not likely that we're going to have anything in that particular space that would be a lot more affordable in $2,000. But what about these other two corners? It could be really handy to have a lower cost solution in the lower right corner. Something that can just sit on a channel, sniff all the packets that come along, all discoverable networks, undiscoverable devices, everything, and just get a survey, like Kismet style, right? That would be really handy to have, and we should be able to ha make a device for less than $1,000. And then also, in the opposite corner, uh, we should be able to make a device that can uh, predict the hopping sequence of, uh, of uh, a target, and then follow along that hopping sequence and tune in hardware and actually, you know, you're only sniffing one channel at a time, but you can hop along with the target network and sniff all the packets on a, on a particular target. So those are kind of my two goals. Uh, and mostly I'm focusing on the lower right-hand corner, uh, but I'm trying to develop hardware that can do both those things. Um, and I'm trying to do it for under $100. That's my, that's my goal. And uh, it turns out this is absolutely possible. So what I've built is a board that I'm calling Ubertooth. And it is just a little USB dongle. It's, it's based on the uh, CC2400, which is a ChipCon series chip from Texas Instruments, um, which happens to be the same series that's in the IM Me, my favorite pink toy. And uh, um, it, uh, it has a couple of capabilities that are kind of unique among uh, wireless trans low-cost wireless transceiver chips. One is that it operates at 2.4 gigahertz and supports a modulation, a one megabit per second frequency shift keying, which is the exact same modulation that Bluetooth uses. Okay. Well, there are a handful of chips on the market that support that modulation that are not Bluetooth specific. Um, and, uh, and unfortunately, all the Bluetooth specific chips that I've looked at, I haven't been able to, to like, get at the baseband layer. So I haven't been able to, to uh, bend them to do the kinds of things that I want. So that's why I've turned to some completely different non-Bluetooth chipset. The CC2400 supports that modulation scheme. And it also, um, it also has kind of a unique feature in that uh, uh, if, you, if you saw my talk yesterday, you, you know, I, I showed like how, how the wireless transceiver chip in the IM me uh, has a particular packet format. And it only knows how to talk to wireless, it only knows uh, how to talk to other wireless devices using this particular packet format. And it's somewhat flexible, but the format is very similar for this chip and for most wireless transceiver chips, but the for that format is not compatible with Bluetooth. So, or at least not for passive Bluetooth monitoring. So there's a, there's a little feature on this chip where you can open up a second uh, serial interface and have it like tune the, tune the chip to a particular frequency, activate its demodulator, and then just have it continuously stream bits out that secondary serial port. Um, and so it's completely bypassing the packet handling capability of this chip. I'm using its front end, its radio, I'm using its uh, demodulator, but I'm not using its packet handling capabilities. And that's kind of the sweet thing about this one particular chip that allows me to do passive monitoring. 